Oh, hey guys. Um, I had some technical issues with the... Um, no, wait. With the new streaming um, setup for YouTube. So, yeah. Had to reorganize stuff. Hey, Seb. Good morning. Good morning. So, I take it your vacation is over and you're back on the road now? Hi. I have no clue about this anyway, so yeah. Um, yeah, uh, long time no see. Um, for different reasons, actually. I actually had like five or six reviews that I had filmed and that I wanted to, to upload to my YouTube channel. Problem is my phone has gone into, I don't know. Um, it, it, it seems that it kind of went back to the Stone Ages. Um, it won't allow me to connect to my computer anymore, so I cannot, like, um, get the videos from the phone on the computer so I can upload them and, and edit them. And because of some storage issues on the phone, I can also not upload the videos directly from the phone to my YouTube channel. Which is basically why there hasn't been anything on the channel in the last couple of months. Because I actually had, like, I think four or five um, kit reviews that I had filmed and that I wanted to upload. And I had some uh, updates and, and builds filmed. And I was like, okay, delete, delete. It, it, was, it was annoying, to say the least. And uh, Yes, let me see if I can uh, get a link for this. Yes, I can copy so I can post this on my Facebook page for those of you who are members of my Facebook group and want to join me and the Dutch guy. So I hope everyone is doing fine on this lovely Monday morning, 12 o'clock in Germany. And as you can already see, the subject of this of this live stream today is sitting right in front of you. It's Dragon's Panzer IV of C, kit number 6291. I actually had a, um, a poll going on my Facebook page where I asked you guys what I should be doing next. And um, basically the options were this or a broom bar. And uh, the majority of people... Decided to, they wanted to see this thing in France, 1940, and um, I was happy with this. This is one of Dragon Super Kits, and when I open the box in a second, you will you will you will see what what that means. And uh, for reference, I'm using this. If you like, want to do some some research yourself, Hillary Doyle is involved, so you probably already know that it's it's a good good thing. Um, once again, I'm sorry for the poor video quality. This is basically due to the fact that I'm recording this with my, my laptop and, and not the phone because, like I said, the phone isn't working properly. The thing is, I could do live streams on the phone, but since I guess this thing right here, the port where you connect it either to the computer or to the um, to charge the battery is broken. So um, battery charging is... A bit of an issue so I cannot like have it plugged in while I film and then it would be like dead after like 20 minutes of live streaming so that's why I'm not using the phone sadly so yeah technical issues galore right now at this place but since I'm now done with my teacher training and should be starting as a teacher soon um like a proper teacher like that's getting paid proper money hopefully um, I should be able to upgrade the um, equipment and I'm looking into buying a camcorder, to be honest, because um, this is just not the quality that I want to put out there. And, um, yeah, thus, um, why is it like there? Thus, I might, might upgrade to a camcorder in the near future. So one viewer left, and I guess it's the Dutchman. Uh, okay, there we go. It's a proper place. All right, let's open the box. Let's let's take a take a look inside. Actually, as you can see right here on this 
this this this sign. It, it was forty euros back in the day for a super kit. Um, nowadays, you pay ninety euros for a new Dragon Panzer IV without all the goodies that you get in this box. But let me introduce you to this beautiful, stunning kit. And 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 that's not all. This like metal gun barrel, metal like brass shells. Metal connectors, metal grab handles, metal shovel cover, and then the the mythical dragon card. Look at this thing. And then compared to what you get as dragon card, quote unquote, nowadays, which is laughable. Magic tracks, great thing. Um, you get like actual rims, no, actual like rubber tires for the um. The road wheels that are like separate plastic. Um, you have three photo etched frets, um, a nice large decal sheet, so some lovely, lovely details. And then, of course, tons and tons and tons of detailed dragon plastic. But this is not supposed to be a kit review, basically. This is this is supposed to be a life build. So, first off, before we start building. I need to pick which marking options I will be using. And we have a couple of options for France that this kit comes with. We either have the 5th Panzer Division in France 1940, or we have the 1st Panzer Division in France 1940. And, and to say the least, I think the 5th one looks nicer when it comes to markings. And then, of course, we have the 6th Panzer Division here, which is also an option, and we have... France 1944, so those are surviving vehicles that made it all the way to the end of the, the war, and one for Russia in 1941 that probably went there after having served on the Western Front already. Um, the thing about the Panzer IV is, um, especially the Mark C, um, that is an early war tank. That served like really early in the war, so um, a lot of kinks that the Panzer IV had had not been corrected at that point. So yeah, uh, we will we will talk about them while we're building it up. So you you will then get to know or see what I mean with this. Um, I think I'm going with the uh, fifth Panzer Division or the sixth Panzer Division. Those two do not have any difference when it comes to build up. Actually, I don't see which one of those has the jerry cans because this comes with some added, added jerry can bonus, you know, like dragon back in the day. So, as you can probably tell, and, and I don't know if you guys have built Dragon Panzer Force, and I know this is probably over a little bit, but just look at the assembly steps for the idler wheel. Oh, uh, yeah, the, the sprocket wheel. Look at this. This is like a five-piece assembly just for the sprocket. Or, look at this. <laughs> this is what makes this a super kit. Those are highly detailed, early release Dragon Panzer of Force. And if you are totally out of your mind, you can even add bolts that are supplied on this brew. And I will show you in just a second. Uh, to add even more detail. There we go. There we go. All right. Um, here's the thing. And, and when I saw this, and I don't know if you guys can see this, these little nooks here all around, those are bolts that you can glue in to the sprocket wheels if you decide to go with the 36. But I think I'm going to go the lazy route. I know. Shame on me. And use the ones that already have the bolts on, number 32. Yeah. Okay, those we no need now. So yes, I'm 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 a boring um a boring guy. I go through this like step by step. Almost like like to the 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 beat of a drum when it comes to the instructions, except for not gluing down road wheels and wheels and stuff, and, and not gluing on the tracks when they ask you to glue on the tracks. Glue on the tracks. Jesus. Um, on a side note, using Ravel Contacta and Demi Exothin with um, MX Bond high performance uh, CA glue. This is the uh, slow drying um, liquid one, like the like very like. 
not the thick one, but the very uh, thin one. Zuron sprue cutters and sending snakes. Um, first off, it asks us to build the sprocket. And like I said, you have two options. You can either go with the 36 and glue in 12 bolts, which, um, nope, thank you. I will not be doing. Wow, this is, this is some, some, uh, you, you could, like, if you do, did this with the, with the bolts that you glue in yourself, it would allow you to properly leak one or two of the bolts out to just add some uh, intrigue to the build. But, yeah, I, I think this is just overkill. So I'll go with the other supplied options. And, and this makes this a super kit. Um, so much plastic, so many options, and, and so much modeling you could do if you, if you weren't as lazy as me, at least when it comes to, to this step. So, Seb, how was your vacation? Did you enjoy it? Wow. Okay. There's like a faintest hint of a mold seam along the top edge of this, which isn't too nice, to be honest, which we need to clean up. All right. Um, then it's part number 34. This is some like really high end detail here. Wow. And by the way, for those of you wondering um, about the projects that I had on the go before all these technical issues started, um, I will be doing a quick update video later on today where I just like on a live stream just like this because I have no alternatives at this point. I'll just be um, running through the the builds and keeping you guys up to date. Let me move this down like this so you guys can actually see the bench a bit better. Now that I've done this, so does this, does this interlock? How does this work? Probably it interlocks. Yes, this does. It interlocks. This is crazy. Okay. Is this supposed to be what it... Holy, mo holy macro. Oh my god, look at the detail. <laughs> this is ridiculous. And for the really lazy guys, you even get like the, the pre-built um, sprocket wheels. Wow, this is ridiculous. This is this is some high end stuff here. Jesus. All right, dragon. All right, I see you. I see you. And and you can you can probably tell why modelers loved the super kids because they allowed you to do so much. At a time where Tamiya just told you to shake the box, throw up the parts in the air, and just, like, be happy with what you got. When these came out in the late 90s, I think, or it's just, like, even, like, I think maybe even early 2000s. Let me check. Um, they came out in 2006. Okay. Yeah, when they came out in 26, I think those were the best models on the market when it comes to Panzer Force, and I still think they probably are still the best Panzer Force out there, although they sadly are out of production, and Dragon has now kind of um, resorted to 
Yeah, well, hand out less quality, which is a shame, if you ask me, but it is what it is. But yeah, this is the the top of the curve when it comes to Panzer Force. Uh, I don't think you can get any better than than what this is, to be honest. Oh, I don't think you can get any. What am I doing? You can get any better than this. This is top notch, and I have to say the mold quality is stunning as well. It's ridiculously great. It's it's really really good. There's no complaint, like no flash, no like burring or anything. It's just high quality plastic from Dragon. Why, oh, why did you change that, Dragon? And yes, I'm still a sucker for Dragon models. But I'm only a sucker for the older Dragon kits. The new ones can suck my ass. I don't want to build the S-Tracks anymore. They suck. I don't ever want to see them again. All right, now... And this probably goes... In there, like this. Oh, yeah. All right. All right. Yep. Okay. Okay. Now then. The building is pockets. Some models, like, when you build them, you never have, like, a situation like this where you're, like, actually having to do something delicate because this is, del this is quite delicate. It is only the first step in the instructions, and you can see how long it takes me to build up the sprocket wheel. Yeah. Gotta say, I love these old dragon kids. Say they are great. They are just magnificent. And then we need another thirty two for the back. Yes, okay. And we have one sprocket built with <laughs> sprocket build up. It only took me roughly uh, twelve minutes. Which is a long time, considering this is one of two sprocket wheels. And now imagine if you were really going the the extra mile and putting in every bolt separately. I I, I don't think you could finish this build in a year if you did this. This is this is quite the build. All right, which side goes outside? I think this is the side that goes outside. Yeah. Messed up there. Great. Well done, Hendrik. Well done. Or did, did I... Oh, wait, wait, what? Oh, I'm so stupid. Oh, 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 this hurts. Wow. 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 Wow, good thing I noticed this now. Then I'm so stupid. Great. Yay. Every now and then, I wonder if I'm the only one who makes these kinds of mistakes. 
then again, you hear people talk about dragon instructions for a reason. They aren't the most easy instructions to follow. Well, yeah, that's 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 the way you start. You ruin the first piece you work on. Great job, me. Wow. Yeah, that that that's messed up, Seb. I agree. The last two weeks were not too great weather-wise over here as well. I hope it's not too bad on the roads for you then over the next couple days. The seed wave, like, I hope it doesn't mess you up too bad. Now I'm trying to do some repair on, on what I screwed up there. With trying to remove the glue remnants where they were not supposed to go. Then, of course, once weathering starts, you will be putting some, some dust and dirt in there. But you still don't want it to be, like, all mushy. All right. All right. Whew. I was able to save this. Luckily, I was able to save this. All right. Now, on the back side, I won't be doing the same mistake again. Yeah. Yeah, that makes a ton more sense to do it like this. Wow. I think I should use my brain more. It'll save me. From situations like the one before. All right, let's do it like this. Let's make sure that this is working properly. Always be careful with the Revell contactor. That stuff just flows out of the nozzle every now and then. Like an elephant on Viagra. Don't ask. And then you can press this down like so, just to make sure that the glue dries properly and the parts stick together. Yes, that's the way I like it. All right, now all we need to do is add the cap. So, you on your way to France today, or are you working in the Netherlands today, Seb? Okay, this is just some fiddly work here, but here we go. Sprocket wheel one assembled. Only took me almost 15 to 20 minutes, which is way too long, if you ask me. I'm one of those guys who likes to finish a build rather quickly. But yeah, having a super kit on the go basically yeah, makes this impossible. Okay, uh, sprocket isn't even done. Need to finish the back side of the sprocket. That's what she said. With the sanding sticks. This is not a problem. 
I've been using these sanding sticks for, for a while now. They're still working quite nicely for me. That's why I'm not getting any metal filing or something like this. It's just, I don't see the, the point in, in metal files. at this point in time. I know some people have had some uh, some bad experiences with um, sending sticks and but but I'm not one of them so I can only talk for myself. I have not had any problems with them. I wonder if I'm even allowed to talk about these sanding sticks. Since since they were a gift and so I'm such an ungrateful person, you know. But yeah, I'm still using them. Of course, then other people built a lot more than me, so maybe that's why my sanding sticks are still in, let's say, okay condition um, compared to other people. All right, so how does this? Fit in. Ah, okay. Okay. That makes sense. That makes a lot of sense, to be honest. Okay, now the sprocket wheel is done. Had to um, attach the, the back side where it's then uh, stuck onto the uh, the chassis. And when, once we do this, I will, I will show you something, which I think those super kits, it's ridiculous. I can, I can show you in the instruction sheet right now. Um, you get the interior of the, the sprocket housing, like fully detailed, full interior of the sprocket housing. As you can see, like with, um, With the, what's the name of those things in English? There you go. Look at this. It's it's some it's some intense detailing in there. And let's compare, just for for the sake of comparison. And that it is actually worth it to do what I just did with this sprocket I just built with this sprocket, and you can you can you can see the difference. It's 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 a striking difference. All right, huh? Oh yeah. Okay. Um. L. What? Huh? Eh? Okay. Yes, put them together. And then top it off with with the P. Okay, yeah, sure. Well done. Yeah, once again, the older dragon instructions are even more confusing than the newer dragon instructions. Hard to believe, I know. But it is what it is. There are some 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 things in there were like head scratch moment now. What do they want me to do? Uh, where is this part actually going? What is this part? Why does it not show up anywhere? This just falls from the heavens and you have to put it there without knowing what it is and where it came from. Or where you can actually find it on the sprue. Yeah, I love those. Those are great. You get to play detective while building a model kit. Two and one. 
great. Maybe that's why they write two or three in one on the box art, uh, on, on the box covers. It's not like three different options of, of, of vehicle you can build, but it's like actually three different hobbies that they combine here, like detective work and, and model building and painting. And I have no clue what else. Like, Okay. No, that's an idler wheel built up. The idlers are luckily not as fiddly as the sprocket. Although you have to attach some uh, some photo edge to the idlers. And you want to make sure that the cast connections are actually connections and are not like apart from each other, but that they connect and that they touch and that they are perfectly aligned because they are one piece. All right, there you go. All right, now the photo edge. I'm, I'm building one idler and one sprocket here, just so you guys know, because I don't need them now, but I'm trying to follow the instructions. Let's get out the dragon card. And I know that modern dragon kits do not come with the proper dragon cards. All they do is, like, they contain probably, like, a small bag with some... Very minute photo etch and some even even smaller decal sheet. And when I take this dragon card out of its back here and, and show you guys what, what's all on there, it's crazy. First off, you get like all the small extra like lumps of plastic that you need for completion of this. Like the clear parts, the, the towing eyelets, and even more clear parts. Then, like I said, three three sheets of photo etch which is already more like look at the size of this this is all the tool clamps this is the air intakes those are the s mine launcher um chains we have photo etch for the added on um fuel cans like the jerry cans we have the photo etch for the sprockets oh no okay oh oh okay that's what they mean with L. Ah, that makes sense. That makes sense. Okay, I didn't need to do this. Okay, so tough luck. Um, okay, yeah. You get some slight molded idlers and a cupola. And then, like I said, tires, a massive decal sheet. Okay, massive is probably uh, a bit OTT, but it's bigger than, than what you get today. Okay, that's what they mean with L. Okay, let's compare the details in a second. The one-piece mold compared to the two-piece assembly. Oops, that was my stomach. I haven't eaten anything today. Oh yeah, there's a there's a massive de there's a massive uh, difference. Um, what you glue in with the PE is molded in here already in the two piece assembly. So this is a lot more detailed. Okay, all right, great. And then of course we need the PE, and I'm I'm happy to have finally gotten. The proper CA glue, so I don't have to use the the cheap like craft store crap CA that was spilling all over my models and made them look horrendous. Why I actually not like didn't use a lot of PE in the in the past, but yes, this stuff is great. So yeah, we'll be using this to make our idler. We still need this for A24. Yeah, we still need this for A24. Okay. So, take out the P. 
take a closer look at the P. Beautiful, beautiful P. Okay, for this side, I need this. Yeah, okay. The only thing that I probably need to get for this build, um, tool-wise, that I still don't have in my tool collection is a PE bender. Because there's so much PE on this that having one of those will probably come in quite handy down the line. All right, just go in there. Come on. Chop, chop. All right. Then I need the PE. Then we need something to put the PE on. Give me one second. I need to go get some aluminum foil. Out. That was my knee. <sighs> I wasn't expecting to use PE at this early stage in the build, that's why I had to go to the to kitchen to get some aluminum foil I didn't have it ready. Put a small blob of PE on there. Like I said, this is the, the slow drying um, PE. Use a toothpick. And just put some PE in there. Press down. Make sure it sets. Then again, put some PE on there and put it in the other areas where you need to increase the bond like this. Make sure you don't leave ugly marks. And there you go, PE assembled. See, Seb, even I can do this. If I can do it, you can do it. You just have to trust yourself. PE is the devil, but yes, I know I hate it as well. But it adds so much to your builds. And once that is done, we can just seal it in. with this piece of plastic, which will kind of work as a stopgap, just keeping the PE in place. No, I will not stretch sprue. I don't need stretch sprue. Shut up. That's not nice of you to remind me of this incident in my life. You know, back then, that was a very hurtful experience. I felt like a second-class modeler than a second-class citizen. I was incapable of stretching. Sprue. This on this side. We can do it this way around. Just put the PE on before we put the piece in. Because we don't need to align it as properly as we did on the other side. Because it's round-ish. Well, we do need to line it up properly. Anymore, what I just said there. Because there are spokes.
I do not appreciate you reminding me of my, my stretch sprue incident, Seb. And now he's gone. Now I'm alone with those of you who watch this at a later point. All right, we have now built up an Eiler and a Sprocket. Yay, and it only took me forever. Forever. And always, when you use the super glue, try to make sure that this does not get stuck to this. So. Yeah. And glue it to your fingers. Yay. I'm not the best PE guy. I guess you could tell. All right, next up, let's do one. One uh, rope wheel. No, let's wait for the rope wheels for a second. This, there, there's so much going on with these these super kits. Um, while while I wait for my mind to tell me what to do next, um, I can tell you, however, what setting I'm going for. I'm going for a French village, some cobblestone road. Um, a small town, like, I don't know which one exactly I'm going for, with a building, uh, with some, some nice French advertising signs um, on the walls, um, maybe a couple of figures, um, yeah, like, summer 1940, uh, after the invasion of Paris with uh, German troops roaming around France. Um, yeah. So that's what I have in mind. I still haven't got the building, and we'll see. Let's let let's see where this this is gonna go then. All right, I think I can do the second idler while we're at it. All right. Okay. Let's use the sending sticks because sending is my favorite task. That's, you know, that's why I'm not doing the road wheels just now because I hate sending. Like, then again, who who, who likes sending, right? I, I cannot imagine one of you guys being like, oh, yay, sending. Woohoo, I was looking forward to this. Um, I don't think anyone is like this. I hope, at least hope that that's like a normal thing to dread sending. Huh? Huh? Ah, that's okay. Um, yeah, I, I really don't like sending at all. So, no wheels today. Or let's put it like this: I I I I can do sending, but um, I really need something in the background, like music or, or something like this, that like kind of takes my my mind off of it, and like otherwise I get annoyed very quickly by sending a lot. Yeah. Okay, P E photo etch. On the one hand, I love the fact that it adds a lot of detail. On the other hand, I hate the fact that it's so small and brittle. And yeah. And I think I need to buy geek goggles or something. Maybe then I could see the PE better. All right. This one worked a lot better than the last one. The thing is, when I cut the PE with a knife, 
there are always those those small like connector points left over that then interfere with the rim of the idler, which is creating the the friction fit, and that, that that's why I'm trying to like cut it as as closely as possible to to the rim here to the PE part, so that the um, the connector point is as small as possible and does not interfere with um, the idler itself. The problem is, or problem being, I don't really want to um, to sand those pieces of, of photo edge because I'm worried that I might bend the edges, which kind of would destroy them, or bend them, which kind of would destroy them. And I would really not like to do that. So, yeah, I have to make this work without sending them. Thus, it's a bit of a problem, but not a big problem. And there we go. Yep, that's the second idler almost done. The only thing left for me to do with this is put the cap on on the other side. Which I will do just now. And again, you can use super glue for this and glue it to the um, the, sprock, uh, the the PE part, or you can just use some um, normal plastic cement, which I do. Uh, put it in the the hole here. Put it in the hole. Okay. Yeah. This only sounds. Uh, a little weird. And then I'll do the, the double tap here with some super glue on there as well. And now that should sit tight and nice. All right, so that's idler number two. All right, two idlers and a sprocket wheel in 45 minutes of modeling. Wow, I'm racing through this, am I not? Am I an important person? Oh my goodness, so many emails for me, and none of them are important. <laughs> Great. So, Seb, what are you currently working on, other than driving a truck, model-wise? And, and who is the second viewer that has joined us on this beautiful, sunny, Sahara-temperature-like Monday morning? Feel free to um, to join us. Feel free to uh, type in the chat. Um, always appreciate people talking to me while I do this because otherwise I try. I, like I'll go insane. I admit it. All right, those I need. Okay. Clip. Clip. Those I don't need. Clip. Clip. Okay, those I don't need, so they can go in the spare spin already. Great. That way, uh, I try to keep the box as uh, clean as possible. This I also don't need at this point anymore. This I do need for the second sprocket, which I will be doing, I guess, off uh, off camera though. Let's take out the the hull top here. And look at the detail on the hull-top. I have scissors. Where are my scissors? Where are my... All right. Hull-top. Um, you can probably already tell. The new uh, Dragon hull-tops on Panzer Fours have those weird um, blobs on top where they um, attach it in the slight molds. This does not. This does also not have the attachment points for the bogies already molded on. You have to put them there. Um, another thing this makes this uh, that makes this different is you have the two fuel filler caps for the early Panzer IV, and the fact that you're missing this part as well um, allows you to add a lot more detail to these. Overall, casting quality is great. It's straight. There, there are some sometimes some issues with the straightness of this because this this gets de like compressed in the box and 
they're crooked a bit, but this is perfectly fine. So, can't be unhappy about that. Um, should we do return rollers now? Yeah, why not? Let's do some return rollers. They're also part of step number one. So, this is a trusted sprue. It's the A sprue, a Panzer IV A sprue. Even the new dra uh, Dragon Panzer IVs do contain this sprue every now and then. If at least a bit changed. You get this, you get all of this. You don't get this nowadays because you don't need this because these are already molded onto your hull. And you don't get these wheel hubs. You get the later wheel hubs in the new kits. Unless you, of course, come like buy uh, an, like, an early version of Panzer IV, then you get this, but it's separated from this sprue. But yes, this is the, the good old um, trusty A sprue, which right now we only need for the back half of the return rollers. Four return rollers per site, as normal with the Panzer IV. Um, Not much um, special uh, with the Panzer IV C in this regard. There are, however, differences between like a Panzer IV C and a Panzer IV D or B and A, which I will be talking about probably in the next video. So, if you're not into technical spe specification. Of German armor, I'd advise you not to listen to this. Build a Russian army truck for the in the truck builds. Uh, build and pay the two dreams in a truck for a mass set review. Build an S3000 and a Maltier ambulance for the. Ah, you started the Yak Panther. Keep me up to date with that Yak Panther. I'm actually looking into buying one of those kids. I really want to know how they how this thing comes together. If there are any issues with the so I'd appreciate if you could keep me up to date on that. Yeah, we we'll really be interested in seeing how this thing comes together. You have the um, what's it, what's it called? The Tacom one, right? So you have a lot on the go currently, I take it. That's great. Being busy on the bench. Can't say the same. This is the first new, no, actually, actually, and that's the thing. I've built, oh yeah, Meng, right. Um, I have uh, built a Panzer 38T. Um, which I wasn't able to film anything about, sadly, for that bridge diorama. I initially had planned to go with the 2 to 2 on that one, but it just did not look like something I would like. So I replaced the 2 to 2 with a Panzer 38T. And I have to say, I really dig it. Looks really nice. Still have to paint it, however. Um, it's only build and I have figures. The only thing I do need to do is replace the tracks because it's the Hobby Boss rebox of the TriStar Panzer 38T and the tracks of the TriStar 38T are horrendous. I have seldom, seldom seen single link tracks be so atrocious. So yeah, they need to be replaced and, um... Once I get the frules to that, I can uh, then put the frules on and hopefully, just hopefully, finish this dio piece before the model show um, of my local model, uh, like the local model show, which actually I think is taking place in August, if I'm not mistaken. I have to check on that. I hope not.
Because if this takes place in August, I am I'm under the gun right now. Because I still haven't finished the um Totten Cup for Dio. Well, the Dio base is kind of done. It needs a bit more snow in the house than the Dio base is done. But I still haven't finished weathering the um, the Panzer IV. The Panzer III is done. But like I said, I will be going over the uh, updated or be going over the builds that I was recently working on and show you guys them a bit later on, either today or tomorrow in sort of an update video. Well, just like have the bench empty and just like show you all of those builds. I hate sanding so much. If you can't tell. Um, I rather use my hobby knife to remove the um, the seam on the return lowers. That's the only thing. Like, if there's one thing that I really do not like about the German World War II armor, and I'm like the biggest German World War II armor guy out there, and, and you probably know that. I own, almost always only build German armor because I like it. It's, it has nothing to do with my nationality or anything. It's just I like them. But the fact that they all come with, like, aeons of road wheels, return rollers, with, like, rubber tires, and they all have this annoying seam that you need to get rid of, and then you have to damage them, at least a bit, to make them look realistic. Although I have to say, uh, Panzer IV in 1940, that has just been... Um, issued to the troops on the front would probably not have like massive damage to the road wheels. There will be some tear, like wear and tear, but like not the massive, like chunky cut out wear to its road wheels and return on us. So we're almost there. We've almost finished four of eight return rollers. Yay. And I think once I'm done with half of the return owners, I will actually take a break and eat lunch. I haven't had breakfast today, although I was up at 6 o'clock because I wasn't sleeping too well. Maybe this was um, excitement because I knew that today I would be coming back to you guys on, on here. Because I actually missed interacting with you guys. It, it's a fact. Um, the fact that my phone broke and isn't working properly right now is really, really annoying me. And um, the fact that I currently don't have the funds to invest into a new camera is also annoying me. But it is what it is. And as soon as I can change this, I will. So, yeah, once I'm done with this return roller... I will take a potty break, and then after that, I will have lunch. So, with that in mind, I want to thank Sep for keeping me company in the chat, and the other viewer or viewers who um, made the trip here. And like I said, I will probably be back sooner rather than later today um, after lunch. Like, I guess I will take like an hour off now for lunch and toilet and stuff. Maybe run some errands and then I should be back like at three o'clock or something. Uh, I will keep you guys posted. Thank you for joining me and I'll see you guys in a bit. Bye for now.